Good afternoon everyone. I am Urujit Prabhupada, first year student of Midas School of Business. We have with us today Professor Dr. David Patient, Professor in Organizational Behavior, Catholic Lisbon School of Business, Portugal. He is a visiting faculty at Maya. He is with us for a very intensive course in Organizational Behavior. A very warm welcome to you, sir. Thank you. Uh, sir, uh, I'll start with like, you have been coming to Maya for the last three years. So how you, your experience has been? Um, well, I keep coming back, so my experience has been uh, very positive. Um, I think there, there are a few things that are especially nice for me coming to my room. Um, one is that it, it has uh, both the feeling of, of an institution that's embedded in, in a very dynamic and different culture, which is, is uh, Indian culture, um, but also it has the feeling of a startup. And, and so I look forward to my visit each year to see how things have progressed and how the students I've taught in the past are doing um, and how the school continues to, to extend its activities. Um, so it's, it's been nice to, to, have, uh, to kind of have joined the, the visiting faculty here in year zero and then to come back next year. Pleasure hearing this. Is. How do you think organizational behavior is important in many years? Well, everybody believes your own discipline is the most important um, and I'm not an exception. And uh, there, I think in today's world, um, the technical issues are often more tractable and solvable um, than the people issues. I, I also feel strongly, and, and this is from working with a lot of organizations, that often the strategy is very good, but the impl implementation is where we run into problems. Um, and that's where organizational behavior begins to be important. Um, we have to understand the people side of things. We have to understand how they're going to experience events. We, we need more and more to understand that if we want our organizations to compete successfully, then we really need to do an extraordinary job of, of managing them and motivating them and communicating with them and understanding them. Um, and that's what I teach, it's the people side of things. So is it really possible to uh, teach managers the skills of organizational behavior concepts like to communicate, motivate employees and to bring about this change in the organization? Like, is it not that they are really, they are already managers and they are good at handling people and the issues? Yeah. Um, I think the good news is that it is possible to learn these skills. Um, I think we, we sometimes take one of two extreme positions, we either assume that this is straightforward, it's common sense, and, and therefore that we do it. And this is very incorrect. Um, in fact, most managers could have far more productive employees and far more effective teams if, if they were to apply some of the skills that we teach in, in OP. So it's, it's not something that's easy or that we generally do. On the other hand, it is something that we can learn. Um, so when, when, uh, when I hear executives say, even if they're 50 years old, that I'm not good at negotiating, or I'm not an effective communicator, or I'm not the kind of person who would motivate his employees in this way. Um, I disagree. I think that these are skills that can be learned. Um, they're not easy to learn and apply necessarily, but they are skills that everybody can learn. Okay? So they're not an in innate ability, um, and not being good at something naturally when it comes to managing people uh, is not an excuse not to learn how to do it properly. So, uh, part of your research focuses on effective managerial communication and employee motivation. Can you please tell us more about your research? Yeah, I've, I've, uh, I've been doing research on communication for about the last 15 years. Um, and I look at several things. Uh, I look at how negative news should be communicated. Um, and so I've studied doctors, I've studied managers giving layoffs, I've studied people giving performance feedback um, and I've, I've also looked at the reasons why, why professionals often don't do a good job um, and, and some of the findings from my research I believe are very strong. If, uh, if we want people to accept our decisions, um, our decisions not only have to be fair but we need to explain to people why they are fair. The, the second thing to remember is that we, we often think wrongly of communication as, as being what we say. In, in fact, if we want people to accept what we say, and if we want people to accept the decisions we've made, um, 
we're also going to need to start listening to them more. And, uh, and we call this voice when you encourage input um, and when you give people a say in the decisions and if people have that and if we can use that wisely, um, then people will accept what is communicated to them even if it's bad news at times. So, uh, MIDA has this unique model of teaching, the immersion learning model. Like here we are taught one course at a time for two weeks and you completely get involved in this course. So how do you feel like this te teaching methodology? I like it. Um, more importantly, I, I think it works for the students in a couple of ways. Having, having these intensive courses means that you can, you can bring people in from all over the world, which would not be possible. Or at least you would not be able to bring in the same people if, if uh, a course lasted an entire semester. Um, I think the other thing that I, I enjoy about it is I find in today's world that we spend a lot of time switching between things. Okay? We, between different technological devices, between different tasks, between different aspects of our job. And I, th I think we lose a lot of time um, and we lose uh, a lot of energy to each time we switch between things. Um, so if I have an accounting course in the morning, and then I do some uh, finance homework, and then I need to, to switch to discussing um, a marketing case. Uh, I think there's energy spent in, in each of those kind of switches. Um, and the advantage of having a course that focuses on, for example, organizational behavior for two weeks, is that you don't have to make those switches. And it, it, it makes it easier as, for me as an instructor to, to give a class that is cohesive. Okay, so it's like I'm showing a film that hasn't been interrupted by 20 other films. Um, I can start today and I can build on what we talked about yesterday, knowing that your focus has been on organizational behavior the whole time. Um, it's also very satisfying to, uh, to, to cover such a lot of material in 10 days. Um, it feels like a journey that, that we're kind of all in together. Um, and I think the experience is more intense and enjoyable um, because it's so concentrated. Lastly, sir, do you have any suggestion and advice to students of mine? You know, you should always be you should always be reluctant to ask an older guy to give advice. Okay, but, but I I would say a few things. Um, one is it's it's important not to be scared of failure. Okay, even though I know students of mine are very ambitious and, and they work very hard. Um, I think the, the great thing in, in university, but also in your careers, is not only to do what you're good at, and, and not only to avoid you know, making mistakes or failure. I, I think the great thing about being at university is that you should be trying different things. And you should not only be leveraging your strengths, which is important, you, you should also be trying to work on your what that means sometimes is that in a group you'll be doing something that, that is maybe not your best thing because you want to become better at it. And, and if you get in the habit of, of doing that, you know, while also trying to be, be a good performer with a good track record in other areas, then you'll be able to take that through to the workplace. And um, I think it's that outlook that's important. It's not what you learn here, it's that you develop a learning profile. Um, it's that you feel comfortable uh, taking chances and uh, so that would be one, one piece of advice. Um, the other piece of advice I, I think would be to, to try and benefit from some international experience and uh, I know how much I enjoy being here in India and how much I can learn. But I also spend time with the Meyer students when they come to Lisbon um, and I can see how much they're learning. And I can see how much it's opened their eyes to, uh, to some things that are different in Portugal and Europe. And I think for anyone who's graduating from a business program now, they're, they're graduating into a world that is increasingly diverse and international. Um, so don't wait, don't wait to get your feet wet, try and jump right in. That brings us to the end of the interview. It's been a great pleasure to be a part of your course. We hope to see you again, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much. Welcome.